Hey everyone, I'm Michael from One Sky Astrology, and this video is going to take a look at the new moon in Constellation Cancer on July 31st, 2019. These new moons are a potent, potent time to plant the seeds of intention and to dwell in the inner space of reflection, meditation, contemplation. This new moon follows on an eclipse cycle. So we had a, a solar eclipse last new moon, and then the full moon was also a lunar eclipse. <clears throat> it can be a very disruptive time. And in a way, this new moon represents a sort of template, the sort of seed of, of things that might be coming in the way of replacing those patterns that were disrupted or swept aside, those patterns that the eclipse season turned up, kind of like turning the soil, making it fertile, making it good for good for the planting. So taking a look at the skies, taking a look at this chart, um, we can see pretty pretty nicely in this case. Uh, what kind of energies are going to be especially supported and where we might have to lean in, where we might have to do a little adjusting. The first thing you'll notice is that these uh, signs are different sizes. You have Aries and Taurus, uh, Gemini, Cancer, all, all around you'll see they all occupy a different number of degrees and that's because we're using the actual skies in an astronomically accurate way. This is the way that astrology was originally practiced and where our uh, Ptolemaic body of knowledge comes from. So I practice in this way. It's called true sidereal astrology. You can check it out. Um, and uh, if you're new to it, stay with it. It's pretty interesting. Um, this full this this new moon this new moon sees the sun and moon conjoined in watery cancer a sign that is uh, always known to be sensitive to be inward looking to be looking to the familial very nurturing relationship the sun has been in cancer since about the last full moon so for about two weeks we've been We've been in this energy, and it's a more emotional energy. Um, I think from that point of view, things might stay a little bit touched by the emotional because this is looking to Jupiter in uh, Scorpio Fucus, and uh, that's, that's also a water sign. It's fixed, fixed water. And this new moon makes another trine up to Pisces in Chiron. Um, Chiron in Pisces. And so almost we're almost making a grand trine. That'd be, uh, that'd be, be rather interesting, but, but, but we're making two trines. And uh, whenever, uh, whenever uh, a trine is made, it's usually between two bodies that are in the same element. And in this case, Pisces. Scorpio and Cancer are the water signs. So they're they're really pretty well represented here with Neptune on the Pisces cusp. Um, if if just to just a tangent on this for a, a second, we'll see that um, there are no no activity in the element of Earth here. So this may not only be an emotional uh, cycle, but it may be the seed of an emotional process, and it may not be a very grounded process. That's going to be something to check, especially in the next 30 days. Where's our grounding? How are we connected to the earth, to the physical world? Are we being practical about the way we're thinking? <laughs> Mercury in Gemini is pretty practical but it isn't terribly grounded. So that's something to keep an eye out for. 
but overall i think this is a great a great new moon because we are we are bringing the jupiterian energies of good luck of good good uh, attitude positivity optimism faith hope a kind of a uh, very passionate very passionate sense of of optimism um, as it's expressed in that degree of scorpio fucus and with chiron we see the healing process in all its aspects placed in, in Pisces, this is going to have a lot to do with the world of emotions. So emotional healing, big, big, big word, big buzzword of this cycle, emotional healing. And we also see the moon and sun making a square up to Uranus in Aries. And that's going to be great for any new patterns around our sense of self, our sense of identity. It's going to be great for making the changes kind of filling in again that space that's created when something's destroyed or disrupted here comes uh, uranus and aries supporting our growth supporting innovation supporting looking forward supporting all of these things that are that are going to fill that gap and there may be obstacles with the square it is considered an adverse uh, an adverse relationship but it's a relationship it's definitely what's more important to understand is that it brings the energies of uranus and that innovation change forward thinking into the frame of the energies of the template of this lunar cycle i want to take a special look at um, mercury in um, in gemini here so mercury is stationed direct which means that it's moved forward, gone retrograde, and is moving backward and is now at its most retrograde point, deepest in its shadow. So it's just station direct. It also means that Mercury is going to be in the same degree of the sky, kind of giving this like more intense imprint for this lunar chart. So I think that it's going to be interesting to watch our thinking patterns, especially over the lunation of the next uh, 30 days for um, things like things like obsessiveness and fixation because we have this opposition here to Pluto for things like uh, darkness pessimism even um, even even bordering into uh, tendencies towards depression maybe with uh, Saturn oppositions you can often have a very dour or a severe bent to your thinking it can be very critical and these are these are the players that mercury is kind of staring across the the table at pluto and saturn um, and mercury is also conjoined to the north node so in our in our considering in our thinking because mercury is thinking in our thinking about things like the north node um, inspires like uh like where we need to lean in the new our life path what we're what we're here to do these kind of themes um, we're looking we're looking directly dealing with an oppositional relationship to pluto saturn and the south node which could express itself again as fixation could express itself as uh, obsession could express itself as as more negative traits so with mercury with mercury making these relationships and having these uh, having these uh, energies at play in its in its expression, we also see uh, trying up to Neptune in Aquarius, which is important because Neptune in Aquarius is is late late in Aquarius, expressing really the culmination of its of its highest of its of its highest wisdom which is what Aquarius brings out, our highest truth, our highest, uh, the real the real truth of a matter. This is what Aquarius is supporting, and those stars bring out in Neptune a kind of um, quality of forgiveness. This is a very Neptunian. One of Neptune's highest qualities is it's able to forgive. And you see Neptune in relation to this Pluto-Saturn thing, maybe the darkness of our past any time we may be fixating or obsessing in the next uh, lunar cycle about the darkness of our own personal past um, we may we may want to remember that energy that's supported that energy that's supported of uh, 
of generosity, of forgiveness, of, of, of taking the high road, that kind of more peaceful approach rather than holding on to it, letting it burn your hand like, a, like an ember. These angers um, may, may very well come to mind in this lunar cycle. Maybe we may experience, we may experience some uh, reflection coming out of these coming out of these eclipses but yeah post eclipse season it looks like the theme is very cancerian very watery and we're developing in these areas in the emotional in our ability to be sensitive to nurture others to listen we're we're with cancer dealing very much with just taking care of with matters of the home with matters of what's close to our heart um, this is uh, this is not about this is not about big public life development. This is about personal development, um, and uh, we are we are really supported here in that in that watery in that watery development in that emotional development uh, because Cancer is uh, is also in relation to Scorpio and Pisces, so there's a there's a, a well-rounded approach to to the emotions that's likely to to be at play uh, cancer is uh, cardinal water so things that happen here especially accentuated uh, the kind of the kind of uh, new patterns that this new moon could set off following the eclipse season in cardinal water this is where new patterns take place new emotional patterns so we could be we could be consciously working towards building healthier patterns of emotion and they may have to do um, in this case with looking at the polarity and the spectrum in between of uh, gender so gender is a pretty uh, a pretty charged word in today's uh, vocabulary but I do want to encourage people to look at the way um, their masculine is relating to their feminine and the way they relate to everything in between to this entire uh, spectrum of gender expression um, there's a lot of healing and a lot of balance that can come from relating to ourselves in a more whole holistic way um, so the themes the themes for this moon are uh, around emotional healing, around growing new habits, looking back and letting go. Instead of fixating on the past, we might be having tendencies to fixate, but really what we're being asked is to bring this quality of, of letting go, of making room, of moving on. Especially with Neptune, making this trying qualities of forgiveness overcoming any obstacles to forgiveness and making room for new ideas looking for healing emotional healing emotional development emotional balance emotional growth um, understanding that the energies are uh, none none too grounded right now and and while while we will have some activity during this lunar cycle uh in in the earth constellations the constellations that represent groundedness pragmatism practicality the template as expressed by the new moon chart is uh lacking any any earthy qualities and might might be a little ungrounded in that way but this is a moon of uh, personal growth, especially emotional growth. So I wish you all the very best. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.